Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our online service, and thank you for joining us. We celebrate today as the 17th Sunday after Pentecost and the last Sunday of September 2020. Today, we have a guest preacher, Roger Hill, a lay servant from the Seacliff United Methodist Church. Let us put our hearts, minds, and the spirits together and begin our service. Let us sing our opening hymn, Beneath the Cross of Jesus, hymnal number 297. <laughs> Oh. 
God visits us at night and accompanies us by day, waiting to hear our sincere voices in prayers. Let us humbly come to the Lord and to seek God's mercy once again to reform our lives to God's design. This prayer was written by Roger Hill in conjunction with his message. Let us pray together. God on high, what does peace even look like anymore? It feels so foreign, so often completely absent from the world we live in. Jesus is our peace. Jesus, our Savior, is our peace. He is the one who brings calm and quiet and rest. Give us tangible moments of deep peace. Help us to believe that it is possible to experience peace even in the midst of chaos. And make us instruments of your peace, Lord. May we always spread the truth of Christ and the peace that he brought to each person that we meet. Thank you, God, that peace is not lost. Just to help us to know how to see it. Amen. Let us have a brief moment of silent meditation and prayer. Hear the words of assurance. The Lord promised that he will keep us from every kind of harm. He will also watch over our lives no matter where we go, both now and forever. This awesome and amazing God is with us all the time. With a heartfelt gratitude, let us lift up the Lord's Prayer together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's anthem, Cleansing Fountain, will be dedicated by Deborah and Rex Endelin. <laughs>
Thank you, Deborah and Rex. Today's children's message will be delivered by Roger Hill, assisted by his wife, Lisa. Roger? Good morning, children. Today's children's sermon is about how we can go about shining our light into the world to help others. As God shines his light on us, to help us guide us along the right path. Many years ago, before airplanes, before rocket ships, people explored the world on sailing vessels. These sailing vessels had no power but the wind, and to navigate, they needed a very experienced captain. They had to go through oftentimes uncharted waters, into ports that were unknown, into cities and channels that could have reefs that could cause a shipwreck. This was easy to do, or easier to do in the daylight, but what happened when it started to get dark? What would guide these sailors to safety? What towns did in those days was to build lighthouses. Lighthouses would stand out on the far side of a jetty, and on that lighthouse was the light, that light that would scan all through the harbor and continually through the night to help a ship guide its way to safety into the harbor. This light is similar to what God does for us. We need to look for and follow his light. God will give us the right path and give us and show us mercy as we continue through our lives. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for these children. We thank you for this day. We thank you for showing your light on them to help guide them on the right path. Also help them shine their light on others that they can inspire them and comfort them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Roger and Lisa, for your inspiring children's message. Thank you. Now, let's share our joys and lift up our concerns and prayers. Once again, it's my huge joy that I've been given permission to baptize children again, starting in October, in the sanctuary during live Sunday service. The first baptism is scheduled on October 18th. Now, there are a few concerns and the prayer requests. Cheryl Alejandro had her gallbladder surgery last Friday, and please continue to pray for her speedy recovery. Danny Coniglio, Doris Coniglio's son, had a medical procedure for his lungs last Tuesday at St. Catherine's Hospital. He was in ICU, but now at home. We pray for his speedy recovery as well. Let's keep praying for John Predis, son of Sue and Phil Predis, for regaining of his good health. Dennis Subiendo will undergo his hip replacement surgery on Wednesday, October 7th. Please remember Dennis in your thoughts and prayers as well. Ileana Surf asked us to pray for her sister-in-law who had serious surgery recently and for her speedy healing. Also for her brother and his wife for their struggles. And Ileana applied for a supervisor position at her work. So please continue to pray for Ileana and her family. Let us pray. Oh Lord, thank you for inviting us to be with you this morning. Help us to feel deep peace in your presence in our sacred worship service. So, we will be recharged and renewed. O oh, gracious and loving God, we continuously pray for the healing of all those in our prayer list and also people in our thoughts and hearts. Stretch your healing hands to them, embrace their painful wounds and hurts, and bless them, O oh Lord. O oh, Jesus, Prince of Peace, have mercy on this earth and all humanity. As we see the world out there, we desperately need your help. We especially pray for our country 
as we are going through a very difficult time. We lift up the prayers for all those innocent victims and their families and friends of a shooting and violence happened and still happening in many places in our country. While the hurricanes soak southern states, while the fires still rage in west coast, so many people are still dying by the COVID-19 virus, and our children and young people can't go to school freely due to the danger of the pandemic. Lord, we don't even know where we are heading in our life journeys. Help us, O oh God. We ask for your continual comfort, guidance, healing, and blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's lecture is Deborah Shield, and she will read the scripture lessons. Deborah? Good morning. Today's scripture lesson is Psalm 121. I look up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. He is the maker of heaven and earth. He won't let your foot slip. He who watches over you won't get tired. In fact, he who watches over Israel won't get tired or go to sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is like a shade tree at your right hand. The sun won't harm you during the day. The moon won't harm you during the night. The Lord will keep you from every kind of harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your life no matter where you go, both now and forever. The Gospel reading is from Matthew, chapter 27, verses 45 and 46. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lia sabachatani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now please join in singing the hymn, If Thou Be But Suffer God to Guide Thee, in the United Methodist Hymnal number 142. Today's homily, Let There Be Light, will be delivered by Roger Hill with assistance by his wife, Lisa. Roger? Good morning. This sermon was inspired by events over the past few weeks. 
Lisa and I had noticed recently that several friends who were previously doing well had suddenly developed bouts of severe depression, despair over the state of the union. They're questioning the meaning of life and what it is to be restricted under COVID-19. What would be the new normal? Here are our thoughts. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. After the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli Lima, Sapahani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Where do we turn when we see darkness over the land, when we feel abandoned, when there is no hope but only hate? Fear replaces faith. Fear stoked by violence in the streets. Fear fanned by a virus in our communities, decimating the elderly and all others in its path. Loved ones and relatives alone in hospitals or nursing homes, whereby we cannot call, comfort, or console them. Confusion and bewilderment among our leaders and all our wondrous scientific technology and science with just conflicting answers. Confrontations instead of compassion. Confrontations with brother against brother, sister against sister. And churches across the country are struggling to open, while bars and restaurants are well attended. We can get a tattoo, a haircut, we can get our nails done in a salon, but people are having difficulty getting together to pray. Jesus welcomed and healed the sinners, the sick, the lepers. He didn't bother taking a temperature check first to see their status. He did not just preach to the healthy, but rather focused on the lost and forgotten. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For where there are two or three gathered in my name, there am I among them. Where do we seek comfort? The saying is that after COVID-19 is over, people have to decide whether first to go to AA or Weight Watchers. But is that where true comfort is? In the simple pleasures of just eating and drinking? Just drinking away our troubles? And how do we comfort those that are in pain, alone, hungry or in need. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber or sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is our shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you all from harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forever. Where does one put one's trust? One by one, we have seen both people and institutions torn from their lofty pedestals. From profiteering pharmaceutical companies to our founding fathers and their legacy of slavery, to Supreme Court justices and their bitterly divided rulings, to scandals of renowned religious figures, movie celebrities, business moguls, the list of flawed people and institutions is endless. Is no end to mankind's humanness Yes, we're all human from that moment in the Garden of Eden. Fallen angels, mortal, full of emotions, misgivings, prone to making the wrong choices. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? From Romans, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. What lessons have we learned? What do we wish to teach and hand down to the future generation? What are today's children seeing, thinking, and learning about our reactions to these current events? Our future is in our children, they are tomorrow's leaders, yet even some of their teachers and coaches are now called into question. 
What are today's children going to take away from this unsettling period? And how do we shine our light, the light of Christ, into the ever-darkening world? How can we inspire, encourage, and enlighten? From Isaiah, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This period is extraordinary, a test of character, a test of strength, a test of ingenuity and creativity. We have seen it done throughout history. One small step for a man, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. All we need is one step, one smile, one gesture at a time. So now let us focus on the good. Negativity breeds doubt. Focus on the good. Focus on what we can do, no matter how small. When COVID-19 began to rage in New York City, did you happen to notice all of a sudden there were restaurants practically going out of business who decided to give free lunches to the first responders? And spontaneously at 7 p.m., people began opening their windows and going outside, some clapping and some singing, again showing appreciation and respect for healthcare workers. Others began sewing homemade masks to give to the first responders. What began as a trickle of goodness turned into a river of human kindness. There were parades to graduate recent high school graduates who had virtual graduations. There were parades for children their moving up ceremonies, parades for teachers. More and more people followed the examples and joined in the movement of showing their appreciation and contributing their talents. From Galatians, and let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. We can embrace new technology, even though it might be confusing. Where was Zoom before? Lisa's helped several of our octogenarian Kiwanis members learn how to do Zoom. One local rabbi in Glen Cove used to get 40 or so people in his Friday night Shabbat services. Now with Zoom, he's gotten almost 100 to 150 people at some services. Young adults who never came in person now are regulars. He now speaks of the 13 tribes of Israel, with the new tribe being the Zoomites. Or if computers are not your forte, just making a simple phone call. Our North Shore High School Kiwanis Key Club started an Adopt a Senior program, calling, checking in on the elderly, just conversing with them, asking them if there was any help they could offer. Delilah is our five-year-old granddaughter out in Oakland, California. Monday through Friday from about 1.15 for about an hour, hour and a half, we have a daily Zoom call with her. We show her videos, we have some worksheets for her, but it's amazing to see one of the last episodes we did was a simple episode of how milk comes from a cow, is transported to a factory and turned into yogurt. To see the wide-eyed wonder of her of the real world, we need to look more like a child at the simple wonders of nature and through the world with her eyes. From Matthew, at that time the disciples came to Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And we've seen such a growing need of families suffering from food deprivation. Our local middle school delivers food to over 200 needy families. Our local club, for the first time, applied for and received grants some of which were matched by a parent's company, grants to the food bank totaling $8,000. At Glen Cove High School, 300 families were being supported with food parcels available for pickup. It was a sombering sight to go there and help out. It was a scene out of the Great Depression. Dozens and dozens of cars lined up waiting to get food. The time is now. Think of your favorite causes, seniors, social justice, maybe it is your local food bank, Perhaps your love of the arts. Remember, theaters, museums, dance, they're all closed. There are no performances. They're desperately in need of aid and money. 
Some say mankind is separate from the animal world by the arts. How can we support them before they go extinct? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Do not hold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come again tomorrow, I will give it, when you have it with you. It takes some initiative to start to take that first step. There is some sacrifice of time, money, or energy, and perhaps some uncomfortability or suffering in dealing with people in, de in de desperate circumstances. But th is there any other choice but now? It is our calling to shine the light of God to others, to show them that compassion, mercy, and tenderness does exist in this world, a world without judgment. We are like Simon Peter and the disciples in the boat. While the waves of COVID are washing over us, the darkness is coming, the wind of the recent storm is thrashing about, and we have a fear of sinking and drowning. And suddenly, suddenly there is Christ, walking on the water coming towards us, asking us to join him. Yes, it is dark. Yes, we are afraid. Yes, it looks impossible. But now is the time. We are being called to action. We are being called to serve. From Romans, not only that, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. So let us now go forward. Let us shine our light. Let us lead with hope instead of hate, faith instead of fear, compassion instead of confrontation. The light of Christ can overcome any darkness. From Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. Amen. Amen. Now, please join us for our closing hymn, United Methodist Hymn number 130, God Will Take Care of You. Let us pray. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and the minds in the knowledge and love of God and his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Now let me make a few announcements. 
clergy and the delegates had our district conference and the district clergy conference via Zoom last week. We found out that we are going to have our charge conference as usual, but virtually. The charge conference date is not finalized, but all the committee chairpersons, please be prepared to give your annual report. Also, the nominating committee needs to know who is going to remain in their positions next year. Uh, please let the nominating committee know your intentions as soon as possible. There is an urgent need for healthy blood donors like you to schedule an appointment. Go to www.nybc.org or call 800-933-933. 2566 for a donation center close to you. I would like to thank those who continue to send in their weekly contributions. If you have not, please consider donating to the United Methodist Church of Lake Grand Kankama. During this difficult time, your financial help will be very much appreciated. Our nursery school is looking for the following donations. Lysol disinfecting spray, sanitizing wipes for hands and surfaces, paper towels, liquid hand soap. Please bring your donations to the church office Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Thank you. And now here's a pumpkin posse update. Bethan? Thank you, Pastor. Good morning and greetings once again from your pumpkin posse. We are one week out from the arrival of the pumpkins. We still need more wheelbarrows, so please let us know if you have any you can share, even to drop off and pick up later, or let us know and we can try and get them. We're very excited to have announced our online sign-up for this year, and we're a little more than 25% there for sign up, so we certainly do need your help. We're hoping that's going to be an easy way in this distance environment that we can all participate in our annual event. You can find that link on the website, umclr.com, either under events or in the lower right-hand corner of the, of the main site itself. Questions, comments, wheelbarrows, and suggestions can be sent to our email that will appear after this announcement. Thank you, and be well. Thank you, Bethann. The pumpkin posse is looking for volunteers to help unload and sell pumpkins. If you can help, please contact the posse at pumpkinpatch at umclr.com. That is pumpkinpatch at umclr.com. I'd like to thank Roger and Lisa Hill for participating in today's online service. My beloved congregation, next Sunday is Communion Sunday. Please have the elements ready, bread or crackers, grape juice or wine. Until we meet again next week, please take good care of yourselves and stay well. Shalom and goodbye.